In this short video, I want to talk to you and I want to review with you some of the causes of low stomach acid as well as some of the health conditions that we often see associated with low stomach acid. In previous videos, I've talked about the symptoms of low stomach acid. I've talked about natural treatment options for low stomach acid. I've talked about how to test for low stomach acid. And while all these are very, very important, it's equally important to understand what's actually causing the low stomach acid. You see, hydrochloric acid is needed so your body can break down and digest and absorb nutrients and proteins and fats. Stomach acid also eliminates things like bacteria and viruses that are in the stomach, and it's important for absorbing many different kinds of vitamins and minerals. But left untreated, low stomach acid can actually damage the gastrointestinal tract. Low stomach acid is also associated with a number of chronic health conditions, including things like pernicious anemia and H. pylori and chronic gastritis and celiac disease and all different kinds of asthma and food allergies and chronic inflammation and skin conditions like eczema and dermatitis, thyroid problems, rheumatoid arthritis, and the list goes on and on. So if you have any of these conditions, just be aware that you're at great risk or at least an increased risk of not having enough stomach acid in your gut. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I'm the clinic director here at drhagmeyer.com where we help people from all over the world overcome chronic health issues, including things like low stomach acid, acid reflux, and irritable bowel syndrome. So let's review some of the most common risk factors and really just some of the most common causes for low stomach acid, all right? So number one on my list uh, really for causes of low stomach acid is going to be something called uh, atrophy of the gut or gastric mucosa, all right? Atrophy is really defined by the anatomical changes that we see um, in the intestinal mucosal lining. So just like muscles uh, atrophy, our gut lining can also atrophy and deteriorate as well. Uh, this can obviously be caused by many things, something as simple as the aging process, or it can actually be due to more serious uh, concerns and serious problems like inflammatory changes, right? These are gonna be things like ulcers. These are gonna be things like infections in the gut. These are gonna be things like chronic gastritis. Um, it could be due to an autoimmune disease uh, like celiac disease and things like pernicious anemia. But the consequence of this atrophy uh, includes, number one is impaired absorption of nutrients. And number two, either a decrease in hydrochloric acid production or the inability to produce hydrochloric acid. And we call this achlorhydria. Now, just for a moment, uh, I want you to think about the consequences that this has on your body, right? If you can't break down proteins, if you can't break down fats, ultimately that means that many different kinds of things, of, of things like amino acids, um, you have all different kinds of, of imbalances in essential fatty acids, you're gonna be deficient in all kinds of fat-soluble vitamins. These are gonna be vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. Um, if you have low stomach acid, you're also going to suffer with uh, deficiencies in things like B12 and zinc and calcium and magnesium deficiency. Um, and so the consequences of this and, and these deficiencies um, can include symptoms like depression and fatigue and low red blood cell count, things like anxiety, restless leg, brain fog. Um, you might develop chronic infections. You might develop chronic inflammation. Um, you might have chronic pain due to a vitamin D deficiency. You might have asthma and immune system problems, um, again, due to vitamin D deficiency or, or low vitamin A. You may develop gut infections. Um, you may develop all kinds of food allergies, right, uh, due to inflammation and low zinc and low vitamin A. So hopefully what you see here is that low stomach acid really has this, this snowball effect on our health. Now, number two on my list of causes of low stomach acid is going to be something like vitamin deficiency. Now, I know in the last video, I talked a lot about the symptoms of low stomach acid, and I said that low stomach acid obviously causes a deficiency in a variety of different vitamins and minerals, right? And this is true, but it also turns out that vitamin deficiencies uh, caused by in inadequate dietary intake can also predispose you to low stomach acid, right? So these are gonna be deficiencies in things like zinc and chloride and B vitamins. Um, we also know that um, these B vitamins are, are incredibly important to actually the production of low uh, of the production of stomach acid. So here again, we see that this becomes this vicious bi-directional uh, problem, right? We don't eat food, so we don't have and can't produce stomach acid, or we have underlying metabolic health issues that undermine the the production of this stomach acid and cause low stomach acid levels. 
So there's a lot of different consequences to that. Number three on my list of causes of low stomach acid is medication, right? Um, these are gonna be things like birth control pills, right? We know birth control pills lead to a whole host of vitamin deficiencies, especially the B vitamins and B12 and B6 and folate. Um, we know that certain medications that are often prescribed for acid reflux and GERD are very often the culprits in some of the root causes behind the same symptoms that you're trying to get treatment for, right? These proton pump inhibitors actually can cause low stomach acid. Um, proton pump inhibitors, H2 receptor antagonists, these are medications like Tagamet and Zantac and Pepsid, right? These are notorious for causing low stomach acid when they're used. Um, number four on my list for causes of low stomach acid is, of course, stress, right? Contrary to popular belief, chronic stress actually decreases the production of stomach acid. Now, here's why. Um, have you ever heard of, of the fight or flight mechanism, right? Or the rest and digest mechanism, right? These are really branches of your body's nerve system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system. So during times of stress, we have an increase in our fight or flight hormones, right? These are gonna be your hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. And when these become activated by the sympathetic nerve system, um, you can imagine that if you're in a fight or flight mechanism, this sympathetic state, this actually shuts down digestion. And so your body is essentially dealing with a threat. And so at this time, digestion food, releasing acid, um, gastrointestinal motility, again, these are not on the, the list of top priorities at the moment when you're dealing with sudden or acute stress and sometimes even chronic stress. So again, this is also how stress is, is tied into many other gastrointestinal uh, problems like acid reflux and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and bloating. All right. So just remember this, that when it comes to digestion, we really want to be in that parasympathetic state. We really want to be in that rest and digest state. Number five on my, my uh, list of causes for low stomach acid is an infection known as H. pylori. H. pylori is a common cause of gastric ulcers. And of course, if left untreated, it results in decreased stomach acid, right? H. pylori H. pylori is, is associated with stomach cancer, and that's because um, H. pylori is notorious for shutting down what are called the proton pumps uh, in the stomach that actually um, help with the production of hydrochloric acid. Number six on my list, um, and this can result in, in decreased uh, stomach acid as well, uh, but number six on my list is low thyroid or uh, Hashimoto's disease. This is an underlying autoimmune disorder of the thyroid gland. Now, the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland. It's in the neck, and the thyroid gland is primarily responsible for making hormones that regulate your body's metabolism, how your body makes energy, right? When we have problems with the thyroid, we typically gain weight, we tend to be fatigued, we, we often have um, acid reflux, we often have bloating, we know that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is associated with low thyroid. And so again, uh, a big part of what your thyroid does is main, maintains the body's metabolism, maintains the body's energy levels. And studies actually show that people with Hashimoto's and, and hypothyroidism, maybe Graves' disease, again, often have associated autoimmune disorders like pernicious anemia and like celiac disease. So again, these are something, these are, these are all conditions to be aware of if you have a thyroid problem, if you have pernicious anemia, if you have celiac disease, again, this low stomach acid should be on your radar. Number seven on my list for causes of low stomach acid is surgery, right? Unfortunately, um, gastric bypass surgery is, is very common in the United States, right? We have a lot of patients that go in, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, often because they're struggling with weight, um, they have gastric bypass. And as a result of that, the consequence of that surgery um, is damage to the intestinal cells and damage to the intestines, uh, either by removing the organs or you know, other, other means. But nevertheless, the actual production of stomach acid is decreased. And again, that leaves you in this hypochlorhydric state, this low stomach acid state. Number eight on my list of causes for low stomach acid is autoimmune, right? Again, I mentioned this just a moment ago, but this could be things like celiac disease. This may, may be that autoimmune thyroid disease that I just mentioned, or even Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroidism. Um, I also mentioned pernicious anemia. And so again, if you are someone who has thyroid disease, research shows that pernicious anemia occurs 20 times more frequently 
in patients with hypothyroidism. Now, if you don't know what pernicious anemia is, pernicious anemia, again, it's an autoimmune disease, and it's where the immune system destroys certain cells in the stomach called the parietal cells. And these are the, the cells of the stomach that are involved and contribute to the production of hydrochloric acid. The second area of attack uh, very often with pernicious anemia is with something called intrinsic factor. Now, intrinsic factor is actually a protein that's needed to bind B12 in the, in the stomach. It, essentially, it's helping the absorption of B12 uh, in the bloodstream. So both of these can, of course, be tested by blood uh, looking at antibodies. And if you test positive for either of these, the end result often is low stomach acid. And again, all the symptoms that go along with low stomach acid that we've talked about in previous videos. So there you go. Uh, those are eight causes of low stomach acid as well as some of the health conditions that we often see associated with low stomach acid. If you liked today's video, be sure to leave a comment below on what your experience has been with low stomach acid. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I've done on this particular uh, subject matter. And of course, be sure to check out the next video uh, as it relates to uh, a few different ways that you can assess your risk for low stomach acid. We'll see you there. Take care.